This is the Alienware Air 51 R2. Let's start off by unboxing. Alright, so it's dirty right here. So what I do is grab a brush. This is Express Clean. So I'm just going to spray some here. Then we're just going to clean it up. Like this. Show you all. Then we're going to grab a little towel like this. Just wipe it off. There we go. As you can see, that looks brand new, actually. So we're going to do the same here with all this. And then we're going to use compressed air. So I'm going to come back once this is all done. You can see it's pretty dirty over here. I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up. This. See, this is the first pass. It's pretty clean already, but we'll get some compressed air to get other parts and some crevices. But yeah, it's looking pretty clean. All right, so this computer has a 1500 watt power supply and those power supplies use a C19 plug. It didn't come with a C19 plug. Unfortunately, the seller didn't give me a plug, so I bounced from Amazon. So yeah, one thing to keep in mind if you're buying one of these is to check the back port, because if it has the triple square looking uh, plug, you'll see the picture. Uh, you're gonna need one of these if they don't include it. But yeah, 1500 watts, so you you know what that means. My triple nine ATI is from the X58 platform. I'm gonna go in here. See, it's a lot cleaner now than before. You can see my cat over there. He's gonna like this computer for sure. Alright, so one bad thing about this computer is it doesn't really have an M.2. I mean, it has this Wi Fi one here, but there isn't one for an SSD. So, got this little bracket from Amazon. So now we have an SSD. Now, if you look here, there is a PCI Express X4 slot. So that's where I'm gonna put this. Now on the Alienware, this runs at PCI Express 2.0. I don't know why they did that, but that's something that you need to know. So this SSD is going to run at half speed. For me, that's fine. I don't mind that. So we're going to do that. All right. So for those who don't know, the Air 51 R2 actually has Haswell E and Broadwell E processor support. Now, this is just a theory, but I got myself a 22 core Broadwell EP processor. Now, one of the good things about those mitigations that happened to Intel was many manufacturers updated the BIOS. This is a BIOS from 2018, so this processor should theoretically work. So let's see if we can get 22 cores in our Alienware. All right, so this is a 5930K Haswell eCPU, and this is the Xeon. As you can see, they look pretty similar. As you can see, it fits right in. All right, so now it's going to... Apply thermal paste, put this on, and see if it boots up. All right, so as you can see, the CPU is recognized along with the 32 gigs of RAM. So let's go into Windows now. All right, so we got that RGB RAM going in there. And then we have two Titan Vs. As you can see, there's no SLI bridge. But we are going to SLI them. And then we have our NVMe card down there. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. I did get an extra cable here. Uh, you can't really see it. It's back there. So this computer supports triple SLI. I'm not gonna do triple SLI on this computer. This is probably as high, high as I'm gonna go. So we'll see how it performs in a bit. All right, so we got the computer hooked up down here in the CS Studios area. So one thing I did wanted to do was I wanted to get a Thunderbolt card so that we can use this dock, but they're extremely expensive. And I sold the one that was in my Mac Pro project, unfortunately. But that would be something nice to do, which you can do with these computers. But anyways, let's go ahead and hop into Windows and see what's up. All right, the first thing I want to show you all is this crazy CPU graph here. So we have a total of 44 threads and 22 cores showing up here. And I also upgraded the RAM to 48 gigs. The RGB RAM is 32 and it had 16. So it's also nice. It's all being recognized here. And then I put two NVMe SSDs in here since the last time y'all saw. So let's go ahead and run some benchmarks. And of course, our Titan Vs are running in SLI as well. All right, as you can see, you can see 22 cores, 44 threads. Give my cat excited. So yeah, this thing is ripping through this Cinebench rendering right here. All right, the rendering is done. And as you can see, we're getting 16,761 which is actually faster than the 16-core Threadripper CPU, so very nice results. 
All right, let's go ahead and move on to GPU benchmarks. Now let's start with Firestrike, which is a 1080p benchmark. If you look at the single Titan V and the SLI Titan V, as you can see, there's almost no performance benefit in SLI in this situation. And the main reason here is because we're using no SLI bridge. There's no NVLink bridge for the Titan V. It was never supposed to be SLI'd in the first place. So the way this is working is it's sharing the bandwidth through the PCI Express bus. So there is a huge bottleneck at 1080p. As we increase the resolution, you will see that bottleneck kind of disappear. Now, in terms of performance, we're below a 4070, but not too far back. So the Titan V is still pretty strong. Let's move on to 1440p Firestrike Ultra. Here, as you can see, the Titan V and the SLI has a pretty decent performance increase now. And as you can see, we can actually beat a 4070 in Firestrike Ultra at 1440p. Let's go ahead and take a look at Time Spy, which is also a 1440p benchmark. As you can see again here, the SLI is having some scaling here. And just as before, the 4070 is being beaten here by the Titan V SLI. So again, we're seeing a performance increase, but let's look at 4K. Time Spy Extreme. Here, you finally get to see the full advantage of using SLI without the NVLink bridge. And we can actually beat a 4080 now in the GPU score. This is pretty good. All right, so as you can see, the performance is quite good. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the Titan V because this is my backup GPU system. I sold most of my other GPUs that I have. The 4070 is in my X299 platform. And I think the Titan V still performs pretty good as you saw from the benchmarks. It's around a 2080, 3070 performance in rasterization. In ray tracing, obviously, it can't do ray tracing in most games. I think one of the old Battlefields was the only game that supports that. But you could drop a 4070, a 4080, even a 4090 if you want in X99. X99 is a pretty good platform. I mean, it's old, but if you had a choice between X58, X79, X99, let's say you're trying to make like an older, cheaper build, you could buy a motherboard, CPU, and RAM for X99 for around 150 to 200 bucks, and some of them even include a CPU cooler. So if you wanted to make a cheap gaming PC, X99 is actually not a bad option. I did say in my previous X58 video that X58 is getting kind of old because of no AVX support. I would personally just skip X79 and go straight to X99. Now. One fun fact, I'm using Broadwell EP, a 22 core Xeon. There is a bug for the Haswell EP CPUs. So I think the highest Haswell EP is 18 cores. It does allow you to overclock them a bit. So if you want to overclock and you don't need all the 22 cores, I would look into the Haswell EP CPUs and check out the bug. I think it's a microcode bug to be able to do that. Personally for me, I wanted the latest CPU with the most amount of cores in this computer. So obviously I went Broadwell E. And also I didn't see anyone testing Broadwell EP CPUs on this platform. I saw some people with Haswell EP CPUs and I was like, let's try it out. Anyways, logically most people will get a 6950X and they'll probably throw in maybe a 2000 series or 3000 series GPU for this platform. But they want y'all to see my Alienware Air 51 R2, which can now keep up with some of the newer CPUs. Obviously not in everything, but yeah. One more thing, Thunderbolt support. You can add Thunderbolt support to these computers. If you've seen my Mac Pro video, I got the Gigabyte Titan Ridge 2.0 PCI Express card, and that can add Thunderbolt as long as you short the pins three and five on the jumper. You can even add Thunderbolt support to these platforms. Unfortunately, they're pretty much sold out everywhere, so there's that. All right, I think I ramble on enough here. If you have any questions about this platform, let me know in the comments. And as always, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.